I'm Bishop William Medley, and I'm welcoming you again to an edition of Across the Diocese. This month, I have a very special honor of interviewing three priests. The occasion for this is this week as we're filming this in November is National Vocation Awareness Week. But also, just a few weeks ago in October, we celebrated Priesthood Sunday when a lot of our priests were honored by their parishioners and just an opportunity for people to, to say thank you. So I thought that would be a great theme for one of our Across the Diocese episodes. So my first guest is Monsignor George Hancock. Monsignor Hancock, can I say your age? Yeah, you say it. Nin 97 years old. That's right. Uh, has been a priest for 69 years. In 2017, will have been a priest 70 years. That's right. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the church that you remember when you went away to the seminary. What was uh, that like? I always wanted to go to the seminary, and the big thing was money. How do you pay the tuition to get into the seminary? And the tuition, say mine, was $300 a year. So I had a great uncle that had a little extra money, and the pastor talked him into spending, to um, taking care of my tuition at St. Martin for three years. I did a year of special at and then two years of college. And then the bishop applied to a Bastion scholarship for me, which I got at Catholic University. Three years, uh, no, no cost to, to the diocese. One of the stories that I want to hear you say something about, when I visit, uh, is it St. Henry in Aurora? St. Henry in Aurora. You went down there for years just on the weekends. Mm -hmm, I did. And they have a plaque in the church honoring your years there. And it says on there, he pitched his tent among us. Yeah. What do they mean about that? I slept in a tent when I, when I first started that operation. Now, um, the um, Kentucky Lake was already in operation, and then Barclay was just beginning. They were beginning to, to develop it. And we decided we had to have some uh, a church or something down there for the tourists, because there needed going to be a lot of tourists. So we began to look for land. We found some, that land at Grand Rivers, and we've got 40 acres over at Aurora. And uh, then there came a question of what do, how do we, what do we build or all? And there was a guy do, doing some construction for us, and he decided to build a t temporary shelter with, so it could eventually be made into a church. Like a picnic shelter. Like a picnic yeah. shelter. And that's what we built. Yeah. And added the walls years later. There was no walls, just a altar in front of it, and you came as you were. Mm -hmm. Bring your chair or sit on the concrete or whatever. If I had a young man come to me and say, I'm thinking about being a priest, and I sent him to you, what would you tell him? Well, I would tell him that um, he needs to begin to do some praying about his vocation. If he starts praying, ask the Lord if that's what he wants him to do, then the Lord will carry him through and and helping to realize his, his vocation. And then also think about wh what he is going to do in his work as a priest. Because a lot of, I think a lot of young people don't really know what's involved in priesthood and exactly what a priest is going to do. And then the training and the education that goes with it, if he's qualified for that, I think that would be important for him to consider. Well, if we could turn the clock back to 1938 when you were thinking about going to the seminary, would you do it again? Yeah, I'd do it twice over. If I twice to, over. It's, you know, it's, it's really a great life. If you dedicate yourself to the Lord and to the ministry that you're dedicated to, you, you have a lot of good feelings about what you've accomplished, helping souls on, on the way to heaven. And that's what it's really all about. Well, I also welcome Father Pike Powell. Father Pike. Father Pike is 93 years old and has been a priest for 68 years. And uh, so congratulations and thank you on those, on those good years. Thank you. And uh, I just ask you to tell me about uh, what the church was like and what, when you went away to the seminary. I went away in 1941, it was shortly before the war. Somebody said I left because of the war, but uh, <laughs> I didn't know there was a war going on. I didn't know anything for the Union County, but back in those days, and kids, you know. What was the most satisfying thing that you've done as a priest? <clears throat> well, I guess I would put it this way. Uh, let's say deciding to go to uh, seminary 
I didn't have any real up and down joy about it, you know. Well, I'm going to be a priest and I'm going to study. I saw a need. Number one in my family, you know, my own dad wasn't a Catholic and didn't seem like he was going to get very far that way, you know. But he, uh, uh, so I saw, well, maybe something will come of it. And eventually did. And I, three days before he died, he got into the church. You know. Is that right? And, uh, did you baptize him? No, Father Hill did. Okay. I, I was. I was eight days away from ordination. Oh, okay. I was ordained. On, that was a Holy Thursday. He got in church. He was died on Easter Sunday, and Monday a week later, I was had my first mass. So, if I sent a young man to you today in 2016 who said, "I think I might want to be a priest," what would be your advice to him? Well, first of all, I mean, we have to look at ourselves and see. How we're living now as a layperson, you know, am I doing a good job as being a layperson? You know, you get that before you're a priest or a seminarian. And uh, as Father Hancock said, do a lot of praying, you know, praying about it, you know, and turn it over to the Lord and letting Him make the decision, and He will if you give Him the opportunity. You are somewhat legendary throughout the diocese, you've served in a lot of areas. And people love to tell Father Pike Powell stories. They did. Uh, <laughs> and they're mostly all nice and good. Oh, is that right? Because you've, you've treated people graciously and kindly, and, and I think they're closer to the Lord because of that. Also welcome today, Father Joe Mills. Father Joe Mills is 89 years old, and he is how many years ordained this year? 63. 63 years ordained. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've uh, just like to ask you to tell me a little bit about the church and the situation when you entered the seminary. I'm one of seven children. My oldest brother went to St. Meinrich for about a year and a half, and uh, we went over to visit him once or twice, and I sort of liked the place. I didn't know about the priesthood. I just, I was told to go to the seminary and stayed there a while. We had to go to school year-round during the war, lest we be seen as an able-bodied person out there. So I went to St. Minery for, uh, I went there in the sophomore year because we accelerated. I did five years work in two years, I guess, and uh, left for 1946 to go to Catholic University. I was there seven years at Catholic U, and then I came home and was assigned to uh, Uniontown, which is the parish of Father Pike Powell. Bishop Cotton called me in, and um, he said, well, Father, I want to send you to Rome to study canon law. I came home, and uh, my dad was had a heart attack shortly before I got uh, uh, finished the school year. I was home two weeks to the day until he got sick and he died, and I was able to anoint him just as he was dying at the Old Mercy Hospital. So then from there, uh, I was assigned. Bishop Seneca said, Father, I need somebody to teach over at Brescia. There were some tough times. We were uh, going through the 60s. We killed presidents and we killed Martin Luther King Jr. and just really a difficult time. Um, in fact, the one time at the end of a semester, uh, one of the students said, Father, you seem to be on the defense of all this semester. I said, I was. I was trying to keep the faith and share it <laughs> with the students, you know. That was also a, a decade of of a lot of change in the church. The Second oh, Vatican oh, Council yes, yes, changed. Yes, yes. What, what, do you have any distinctive memory of what it was like to be a priest in that era? The church was changing. We had, first we had uh, all Latin, and then we had English and Latin, and then we had English, and we had the altar turned around. We lost a lot of priests that time. We lost a lot of our priests. They, and not throwing rocks at anybody, but they reassessed their vocational stance, and many of them left and get married. And, that was a difficult time for many of our priests because of the uncertainty and all that. You've asked other priests, would they do that again? I sure would. So you would encourage a young man today to take a look at it? Oh, sure. I would tell them, first of all, be sure you develop your prayer life. 